Kunjam Biham Hiram Hazel Hazel Kunjam Biham Hiram Hiram Hiram
Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapti Tamna Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kitam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana Prunatana Nandasya Dvaita Gadat Har Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So like every night, I've been given a topic. So tonight we will speak from the ninth chapter, verse number 29, 9 to 9. Mm -hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Samoham Sarabhute Su Name Dwe Sho Strina Priyaha Yabajanti to Mambakya Mai Te Te Shu Chapiaham Samoham Sarabhute Su Name Dwesho Strina Priyaha Ye Bajanti to Mambakya Maite Teshu Chapyaham Chat Hmm. Translation, the Lord is speaking, I, ne I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all, but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Purport. One may question here that if Krishna is equal to everyone, and no one is his special friend, then why does he take a special interest in devotees who are always engaged in transcendental service? But this is not discrimination, it is natural. Any man in this material world may be very charitable disposed, yet as he has a special interest in his own children. The Lord claims that every living entity, in whatever form, is his son, and so he provides everyone with a generous supply of necessities of life. He is just like the cloud which pours rain all over, regardless of whether it falls on rock or land or water. But for his devotees, he gives special attention. Such devotees are mentioned here. They are always in Krishna consciousness and therefore they are always transcendentally situated in Krishna. The very phrase Krishna conscious suggests that those who are 
in such consciousness are living transcendentals, transcendentalists situated in him. The Lord says here distinctly, Mai Te, they are in me. Naturally, as a result, the Lord is also in them. This is reciprocal. This also explains the words, Yayitam Mam Prapadyate Tam Satayam Bhajami Aham. Whoever surrenders unto me, proportionally I take care of them. This transcendental reciprocation exists because both the Lord and the devotee are conscious. When the diamond is set in a golden ring, it looks very nice. The gold is glorified, and at the same time the diamond is glorified. The Lord and the living entity eternally glitter, and when a living entity becomes inclined to the service of the Supreme Lord, he looks like gold. The Lord is a diamond, and so this combination is very nice. A living entity and a pure state are called devotees. The Supreme Lord becomes the devotee of his devotees. It is a reciprocal relationship. If I'm sorry, if this reciprocal relationship is not present between the devotee and the Lord, then there is no personalist philosophy. In the impersonal philosophy, there is no reciprocation between the supreme and the living entity, but in the personal philosophy, there is. The example is also given that the Lord is like a desire tree. And whatever one wants from this desire tree, the Lord supplies. But here the explanation is more complete. The Lord is here stated to be partial to the devotees. This is the manifestation of the Lord's special mercy to the devotees. The Lord's reciprocation should not be considered to be under the laws of karma. It belongs to the transcendental situation in which the Lord and his devotees function. Devotional service to the Lord is not an activity of this material world. It is part of the spiritual world, where eternity, bliss, and knowledge predominate. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurugena Maha Shri Chaitanya Menobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutalai Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Siya Dvaita Gadat Har Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So the Lord apparently makes two distinctions here, or two distinct statements. He's equal to everyone, not partial, doesn't have any envy for anyone. But one who renders the devotional service becomes what we say, specially blessed by the Lord. <laughs> So where's the equality? Well, we might say, and Prabhupada uses the example of a person who is charity disposed to everyone, but still in a special favor for his own family. And then, or you might even say, uh, in a more uh, concise way, that in the family there may be many children. And uh, the father is equal to all the children, loves all the children equally. But some children obey and some children don't. <laughs> and so the ones who obey get more of the special favor and attention of the Lord, of the Father. And the other ones, they're still loved by the Father, but they're treated in a different way. They're given some correction. Or maybe they might even be ignored until they uh, understand what is their relationship with the Father. So God is equal, but he makes special, what we say, considerations for those who are fulfilling his desires. His desire is that all living entities come back home, back to Godhead. And those living entities that are attempting to do that by rendering devotional service, they are fulfilling the desire of the Lord. So the Lord becomes more inclined to that individual. And others, as it says, he doesn't love anyone less, but love is not equally 
what we say treated. It's reciprocated and treated in, in different ways according to the relationship between the two parties. So we find here that because the devotees uh, surrender to the Lord, they have a relationship with the Lord on a more personal level, where the, the non-devotees are also taken care of by the Lord, but through the material energy, not directly. So for devotees, the relationship with the Lord is direct, and for the non-devotees, it's, it's still there, but through agencies. And the example would be given uh, just like, uh, again, using the family, the head of state, his, his family will be giving direct reciprocation with him. But those who are in the citizens, they may be giving reciprocation with the head of state through the different ministers and cabinet members and, and uh, representatives. So still, the Lord is reciprocating everyone in an equal way. As he, Prabhupada refers to that verse in the fourth chapter, as one approaches me, I reward them accordingly. So sometimes Prabhupada would say, Krishna is like a mirror. What you hold in front is what you see. Um, that's why sometimes people cannot understand why different people receive different uh, results of their activities or different people are treated differently by the Lord because it's how they approach the Lord. That's all. Mm -hmm. He's equal. Sometimes he shows special mercy even for those who don't approach him in the best possible way. But he can do that because he is the all-powerful supreme controller and his love is equal. And so he wants to, if he wants to show special favor to anyone, he can do that. But his special favor is not a principle of inequality. It's just a nature of a loving father. <laughs> so he's not relegated to laws and rules. He makes the laws, he makes the rules. And in a general sense, he follows them. But if he wants to break them, Sometimes people will say, well, you, uh, you, Chris, you Hare Krishnas, you believe in, in reincarnation. So if you do something, you get, a you get a result. So it's very mechanical. This activity produces this result. Well, what about, um, you know, mercy? Isn't there any mercy? Yes, the Lord can somehow or other intervene into the laws of material energy and show special mercy to a certain person where they will not get the exact rep reciprocation of their activity. But that's Krishna. He's both the lawmaker, the father of the follower of the laws, but he, he adjusts the laws according to the reciprocation with his uh, devotees or his parts and parcels, every living entity like that. So, but for the non devotees, it can be a little difficult because he puts them under the control of his external energy. And then in, in the external energy, many times they have to undergo difficulty. But a devotee, sometimes people say, well, the devotees have any difficulties. The devotees suffer. Sometimes we see devotees getting sick or the devotees are, uh, uh, you know, uh, having difficult times. Does that mean they have to suffer just like everyone else? No, because the devotee knows that whatever I'm undergoing, although it appears to be some suffering, it's just some little inconvenience due to having a material body and being in the material world. The non-devotees suffer because they depend on, on what happens to them for their happiness and distress. Where devotees don't depend on what happens to them because they know they're always situated in the devotional service. So although maybe sometimes there, there is some difficulty with a devotee, they're getting, they're getting sick or sometimes even dying, 
they know ultimately it's simply the will of the Lord and therefore there is some what we say uh, purification that comes with the the Lord giving or allowing people to suffer in, that, in certain situations like that. But again, that devotee doesn't suffer. He sees it as simply as some inconvenience or some disturbance that he has to deal with. <laughs> so for a devotee, everything is auspicious. So here Prabhupada makes an interesting point. He says, he said, living entities in a pure state are called devotees. Hmm. What does that mean, in a pure state? So we might use the term devotee for one who's practicing devotional service, but hasn't reached a pure state of consciousness. So what does that really mean? Well, it actually means that those who are engaged in devotional service are in the purified atmosphere. They can fall from that atmosphere, but at the same time, because they're engaged in devotional service, they're transcendental to the three modes of material energy. And also, another principle here is that the term devotee is sometimes used very loosely to identify anyone in devotional service. That's why the word bhakta or bhaktin sometimes is applied to those who are still coming to devotional service. Actually, devotional service really begins on the initiation. And one is preparing for initiation by practicing devotional service and making advancement towards the stage where one actually accepts the uh, the shelter of the bona fide spiritual master. That's why Prabhupada would say many times in his lectures on initiation ceremonies, initiation means beginning. He would say that so many times, initiation means beginning. So now one is beginning their path back home, back to Godhead, before one is feeling the water, getting understanding of devotional service through association and practicing the principles. But now it becomes a direct affair where the devotee has committed his life to the instructions of Krishna through the spiritual master. And Krishna has committed himself through the power of his pure representative to bring that living entity back to him in, in eternal loving service. So, um, therefore, the word devotee really is a very, what we say, elevated state. <laughs> Prabhupada in a very joking mood one time. And that's not actually joking, but it appeared to be the way it was played out. Someone referred to Prabhupada, oh, Prabhupada, you are the best devotee. Prabhupada said, oh, devotee? Devotee? That's very high, devotee. <laughs> devotee. So... Devotee means one who's fully devoted to engage in service to the Lord, or fully devoted to the Lord, actually, and engages in service to show that devotion. So sometimes the, it's understood in that way. Again, Prabhupada says that here, devotional service is not an affair of this material world. And the non-devotees, sometimes they see devotees doing the same thing. And they say, well, you're doing that, you know, you're doing this and we're doing this. What's the difference? But you're doing it to maintain your body and the extensions of your body, your family members. But the devotee is doing it as an offering to the Lord. So there's a gulf of difference. It's the difference between iron and gold. Both are metals, but one is very valuable and rare. The other one is very base and quite common. Also, we see that same principle applied to when people hear about Krishna's pastimes, especially his intimate pastimes with his uh, eternal associates in the spiritual world. And they say it looks like uh, the same thing that we boy and girl does here in this world. But it may look like that from the vision 
of one who doesn't understand. But for one who understands, they know that actually one is love and the other one is lust. Lust means to have a selfish interest and love means to simply act purely on behalf of the, be the beloved. So in the spiritual world, there is no personal motivation. There is only reciprocation of loving service. <laughs> Where in this world, uh, when people are engaged in various types of activities with some motivation, some uh, pre-ascribed gain. So that's the difference. It's a big difference like that. Just like how now we have this uh, lockdown. <laughs> I, was, I was just seeing something recently. The original lockdown happened about, how many years ago was that? About 5,000 years ago, the original lockdown, when Krishna lived at Govardhan Hill and all the residents had a run under Govardhan Hill and they were locked in Krishna. In Krishna's association for seven days, they couldn't go any place. Nobody was uh, worried about what was happening with the news. <laughs> Everything was happening right where they were. <laughs> it's the original seven-day lockdown. So the bodies are, and we use the term lockdown, means that there is a restriction of movement. But for the non-devotees, we're finding that that restriction of movement is becoming very, very painful in so many different ways. Whereas for the devotees are thinking, wow, hmm, boy, I'm getting to read more. I'm chanting more rounds. You know, I got time to do things that I wanted to do and I couldn't, didn't have time to do them before. <laughs> so, you know, the atmosphere around is getting purified. The air is getting cleaner because there's no hardly any cars on the road. <laughs> so, uh, for devotees seeing this, uh, this corona as being karuna. <laughs> karuna means compassionate or merciful. So, yeah, uh, what appears to a non-devotee and doesn't appear the same way to the devotee, although the activity and everything else is, it looks the same. So that's the difference between devotional service. And therefore, we invite every living entity to take, to come to devotional service and be benefited by the direct mercy of the Lord. Instead of trying to enjoy the property of the Lord, why don't we try to enjoy the association of the Lord? Non-devotees, they want the property of the Lord without the Lord. And the devotees want the Lord. When, when they, they want the Lord, they still get the Lord's property anyway because he gives it to them out of his own loving kindness. <laughs> so that's a big difference. So Krishna is making a very strong point here that uh, I'm not partial to anyone. I, I, I'm equally disposed to all living entities. But still, there is those who actually understand my heart and trying to fulfill the desires of my heart. And therefore, I'm specially inclined to them. <laughs> well, that's just natural. Okay, so these are some points that we can consider. Any questions or comments? Uh, we have a question by Boyan Boych. Um, Srila Prabhupada spoke about lack of time. Can you say something about that? The lack of time? Yes. Well, he said, you know, time is very precious and should be used uh, in the best possible way. So a devotee feels, well, there's not enough time to serve the Lord and whatever time I have left in this world, I need to use it in the best possible way. So time is precious. Time is more valuable than anything because 
you can't buy back a moment of time. Time goes in one direction and doesn't say goodbye. <laughs> it just keeps going. Uh, whereas anything material can be gained and then lost and regained. So this is the nature of time. There is not enough time to serve the Lord because the devotee always has wants to do more and more service. And therefore, it seems like the devotee is always busy because he's always feeling, well, you know, I want to do this, I need to do this, I want to spend more time doing this. So there is a lack of time. But Krishna, when he sees a devotee is trying to use time in the best possible way, he helps the devotee by engaging the, by giving the devotee and the intelligence how to use time in the best way. So time is not this thing on your wrist called a watch. Time is the energy of the Lord, which moves things from one position to another position, moves all material things. But time cannot move those in devotional service because time has no effect on the devotee. For devotee, um, whatever they're doing now, when they leave the body, they'll be doing the same thing, probably in a better situation. So for devotee, they don't really have any big programs to somehow or other fill up time with so many things. They simply engage in devotional service. And for time, time is the friend of a devotee because it's bringing them closer to Krishna. And time is the enemy of the, the non-devotees because it's taking away their life and therefore all their, all their plans are being, what we say, shortened, frustrated, <laughs> aborted, <laughs> like that. Yeah. So, and Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am time. <laughs> Is there a follow-up on that? No. Oh, whoever asked that question, I hope that was okay. Any anyone here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gabriel. Thank you, Holiness, for your lecture. Um, I was asking myself, by Krishna's arrangement, he can, he says that he's equal to everyone and to everything. But when one um, understands that uh, he loves God very, very much and that he has a certain rasa with the Lord, uh, would God um, uh, act upon the time and upon the um, upon the circumstances in which we are to um, adopt, adopt on the, would he... Um, um, Desires? No, no, he, would he, would he, um, would he match onto our, our uh, certain, our very certain time and act in our hearts and uh, on the outside, like we could understand him as something uh, friendly, as something uh, what is modern and not so uh, so old, like people would say, this punishing God from the Bible. Well, he's, he's Chris, eternal, and uh, well, I'm asking Chris, myself Chris how, is gonna, how modern he can be. Yeah, he's he's going to relate to you by in the best way you can understand. Hmm. Yeah, he's not a big enigma. It's how we reciprocate, how we approach the Lord, the Lord reciprocates. Uh, modern, ancient, that has no real uh, understanding or no real prin principle within devotional service. 
uh, how we do devotional service now may be a little different due to the circumstances and the environment we're in, but still devotional service is actually eternal. It's the natural constitutional position of all living entities to render service to the Lord. <laughs> so, the Lord is not ancient, nor is he modern. <laughs> He's relevant <laughs> to the devotee. <laughs> Does that help? Well, he knows everything, past, present, and future. God, God is all-knowing. So for him, there's no past, present, and future. Everything exists. And therefore, you know, we change, but the Lord doesn't change. <laughs> We may even change the way we see things, but the Lord sees things the same way, always. He sees it as it is. <laughs> We're seeing with limited knowledge, he sees with full knowledge. <laughs> we can't understand how the Lord is actually all knowing but the principle is there that whatever he wants happens. Whatever he, it's not, he, be, he doesn't become confused about a situation and doesn't know how to work it out. <laughs> because, you know, every situation is his energy anyway. So his energies are working. And he has created the energies, so he knows everything, inside, outside, and all around. <laughs> all-knowing. It's hard to understand someone who's all-knowing or all-good <clears throat> or all-loving or all-powerful because we don't have any examples in this world. But the principle is there. Because he created everything, therefore he knows everything. Because all living entities are parts and parcel, he remains within the heart of all living entities. Therefore he knows everything about all living entities at all times, at all places, in all circumstances. We can create a computer that can somehow or other no, compile, can store so much knowledge into it, so much information, not knowledge, but generally information, that it would even baffle the, the intelligence of some people to under, if that when they would see such a machine able to do so many wonderful things and at the same time store so much knowledge. So sometimes they even try to create somebody like that. They have this one of Sherry. You heard of Sherry, right? Sherry is this uh, this kind of program. I know you could put it in your car. You ask it a question, and it answers your question. Maybe it's called differently here. I don't know. And uh, one time we asked, we were there, and we said. Hare Krishna, we said to Shiri. And Shiri said, for those spiritual matters, you will have to go somewhere else. <laughs> so, you know, so, I mean, even the human brain is creating these other brains, which are like a, just mechanical <laughs> brains that actually can do so many amazing things. We can see it even happening on this level to a some degree, a small degree, very small degree. But it somehow baffles the intelligence even of the, you know, 
of the living entities. So what to speak about God's brain, who he can't even understand, a little, you know, how is it possible that he can know everything at all times, at all places, reciprocate with all living entities simultaneously and perfectly? And at the same time, do other things. <laughs> You haven't met such a person? <laughs> That's God. He's just... Therefore, when we say God is great, we try to describe a little bit of his greatness in these categories of all-knowing, all-powerful, all-beautiful, all-famous, all, all, all all-strong, all renounced too. He's also completely renounced too. He can just give up everything and have no no attachment for anything. Comes to this world as Lord Chaitanya, takes sannyas and renounces everything. <laughs> So it's a whole lifetime of study to try to understand God. Why not? I mean, we're trying to understand so many things. Why not just dedicate one's life to, to try to understand God? That alone is just so intriguing and so uh, revealing. Like now they're trying to find some cure for this coronavirus. So that's that's noble and it's needed. But if they would spend more time, you know, praying to God and glorifying God, then everything would become clear. <laughs> God will reveal everything. He's already revealing it to those who are in devotional service. There's a verse, oh, what is that verse? Oh. One who knows God knows everything. <laughs> what is that verse? Bhavanti, I forgot the, Prabhupada recites this one. It's not a verse, it's a line from a verse. One who knows the Supreme knows everything. Ah, yasmin vigyanta teva vigyanta bhavanti. Yasmin vigyanta. Yasmin. That's the first word. Yasmin. Sarva eva vigyanta bhavanti. Yeah. Yeah. One who knows the Supreme knows everything. It might be in the Bhagavad Gita somewhere in the. Uh, in the Yasmin is the first word. Yasmin, let's see if it's in this in this word. No, it's not mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, so Munda, Mundaka Upanishad Yasmin Vigyante Sarva Eva Vigyanta Bhavati. If one can under, understand the Supreme Lord, the, uh, well, if one can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the controller of all controllers, one can understand everything else. <laughs> So try to know God through the service of God, and then everything else will be revealed. 
yasmin vigyante sarva eva vigyantam bhavati. Hmm. Hmm. Beautiful. Mundaka Upanishads 1.3. Mm -hmm. The Upanishads are the Vedas, or the Vedas are divided into Shruti and Smirti. The essence of the Vedas is the Shruti, the Smirti is the commentary on the Shrutis. So the, uh, the, uh, the Upanishads are the Shruti, mm -hmm. so they are the essence of the Vedas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So that's verse, that statement is right from, from the Upanishads. Um, my question is regarding this verse, that sometimes uh, unexperienced devotees, just by being a devotee, they think they know everything, although it's our or in their day-to-day -day life, it's clear that we are not experts in so many things. So maybe, maybe you can explain how we can um, develop that mentality. Develop that mentality, or make this mistake by thinking that we are expert in everything. Yeah, when one engages in devotional service, they're feeling, they're feeling. They're getting knowledge, they're feeling happy, and things are going nicely. So they feel like they've achieved. It's a feeling of euphoria or a feeling of happiness, a feeling of... But it's simply the Krishna is reciprocating the devotee's enthusiastic devotional service. But if one thinks, you know, well, I know everything or I, there's nothing I don't know, <laughs> And it's like, we used to call that pure devotional syndrome. Pure devotional syndrome. Where devotees would join the Hare Krishna movement and after one year, they would think I'm a pure devotee. But then they stick around for a little while and they start seeing other things. <laughs> so yeah, the reciprocation Sometimes from the Lord makes the devotee feel so empowered that they they just feel you know like they you know they've achieved so much. But this is just a small drop of the Lord's mercy. It's real, but it's not even a small particle of, of what the Lord can deliver to a devotee. And if the devotee thinks, I know everything, then that's false ego. And then what happens is the Lord will teach them through experience. Mm -hmm. He makes you, he helps you make a mistake. So you and then you start you realizing after you start making mistakes, you're not as good as you thought you were. You won't make any mistakes if you always depend on the Lord for everything. But if you depend on your own intelligence, then, you know, sometimes you're okay and sometimes you're not. <laughs> so therefore, one who depends on the Lord in every situation is, is, is never baffled by any situation. And that's what devotional service is meant to bring us to, complete dependence on the Lord for whatever we're doing, our service, the knowledge that we need to achieve, everything is dependent on His mercy. And He says, I can give you knowledge, I can give you remembrance, or I can make you forget too. There was one person, I read this interesting statement, she was a perfectionist, and she was teaching others. And so, in her teaching of others, when others couldn't understand how to do, do it the way she wanted it done, or how to do it right, she would say, it's so easy, why can't you get it right? 
She would say that to all her students. It's so easy. Why can't you get it right? So after some time, she became sick and couldn't do anything. So the Lord wanted to teach her that, all right, you're so proud of all your ability and you're so hard on other people because they can't learn exactly the way you want them to learn. So now, here you are in this situation. What are you going to be proud about now? <laughs> yeah. So the Lord will do that sometimes to teach us when we become proud of whatever we have and show us just what a fool we are or take away something and then we realize, you know, it's not like that. <laughs> Depending on the Lord in all situations is the basic principle of humility. Mm -hmm. mm, Prabhupada used to say, I can't do anything, but with the mercy of the Lord, I can do everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now there's the, there's the principle, the mercy of the Lord. Therefore, a devotee is always eager to get the mercy of the Lord and prays for it also. Okay, is there anything else you want to discuss? We are finished with the, any more questions from outside? Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.